was blocked, but they found out that portions of my small intestine had perforated and exploded. So they had to put it, they had to orchestrate it and put it back together. Then they had to remove a foot of my large intestines. Mm. And so they were like, man, we don't know what the hell, the fact that he's still alive. And so it was during that time, I had been in surgery seven hours. Mm. And the doctor told my mom that, hey, we done did all we can do. We don't know, we don't see, we don't know what's going to happen. At this point, we don't even know he's going to make it. And it was at that moment, my mother shares the testimony. If she was here, she'll tell you. She said, you've done all you can do, but I'm going to go talk to the real doctor. I'm going to go talk to God. I'm going to talk to the one who made him. Mm -hmm. and, and it was from those prayers, her prayers and my grandmother's prayers, that I'm here today. How long was you down? Oof. That sounded like you were Yeah, I was down for a while. You was down, down for a while. Yeah, I was down for, for a while, man. I didn't really find strength until it was time for me to be sentenced to prison. So it took really? me about a year to really recover from that because it was so much. So from that, then I'm going to prison. Yeah. Oh, one prison to the next. Yeah. So Basically. this, yeah. So no, listen, this thing was. You can say a physical prison. Yeah. To I now was, a mental I was, prison. I was, man, listen, it was yeah. crazy, man. Yeah. It's, man, yeah. I'm dealing with this mentally, emotionally. I'm in a bad space mm -hmm. spiritually. Mm -hmm. Even though I'm, I'm looking at God in my life, but I'm still ain't depressed. I'm just not understanding because right. I ain't did wrong to nobody. Right. Um, I'm not a criminal. Right. But yet, I do, I do understand that, you know, the lifestyle that mm -hmm. I was able to obtain, mm -hmm. uh, I was moving fast. Right. And so sometimes God allows us to crash. Mm -hmm. But he allows us to crash so he can save us. Mm -hmm. And I think through that, through, the, through that experience, understanding it on this side of it, God was able to use me. He was. He allowed me to speak into the lives of men that were in the prison that were not being reached. You're talking about brothers that were in prison because, and good brothers, because they lost their job and they couldn't support their child. They're in prison because they got a petty theft. And really, a lot of this stuff, when you look at the prison system, they're not treating the problem. It's mental, right? right? right. You got a lot of brothers that's mental, have mental illness. You got a lot of this stuff is spiritual. A lot of it's spiritual. It's generational curses, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. That that can that that are where brothers are struggling to to break to be because good. it's a curse. Mm -hmm. It's being passed down from one generation to another generation. Correct. So you're seeing all of this, but yet I'm relying on what I know. Before I could even get to that, I had to deal with my own demons. I had to deal with my struggle. I wanted to give up. I was man. Listen, I'm one of the most strong, headstrong people I know. Mm -hmm. But even in this, I'm like. I done lost everything, all the money I done made, houses, I done lost everything. Everything. And, I, and I, so what do I have? And so God began to deal with me on forgiveness because there were some people I had to deal with that did some things to me. But then as God dealt with me on forgiveness, he like, what about the people you hurt? What about the what, what about you? So it was through all of that where I had to find forgiveness and deliverance for myself in order for me to be effective in the season that I was in. And, and I used that as a platform to really catapult me to where I am today.